Hello and welcome to Fat Boss Bite Size. Today we're going to be taking a bite out of the Black Rick Hold 5 man dungeon on Mythic. This video is going to assume that you know not to stand in the fire, that you would dispel harmful debuffs from your allies, and that trash should generally be grouped up and stunned whenever possible, that kind of thing. So we're going to cover key trash abilities as well as all of the bosses you will find in Black Rick Hold on Mythic difficulty and below. Kicking it straight off on the trash towards the first boss, you'll be fighting a bunch of ghostly night elves. The ghostly counselors within these packs cast dark mending. You need to interrupt this to stop the trash from being healed. If you travel up the left hand side, you will fight a mini boss which casts something called soul echoes. This will debuff a player causing them to spawn souls which will explode shortly afterwards. If you get this debuff on you, move away from the rest of your group so you don't screw them over. If you happen to travel up the right hand side, you'll fight a mini boss which doesn't really do much at all. The first boss is amalgam of souls, which is Marigar with bird heads. As the tank, face the boss away from the group for the Reap Soul ability. And as soon as this cast starts, you can move through the boss to avoid taking this huge frontal cleave. Everyone else, if you get the soul echoes, move away from the rest of the group just like you did on the mini boss beforehand, and also avoid the swirling scythe as it knocks you back whilst also dealing a bit of damage. When the boss gets to 50%, it will stop doing everything else and start channeling. Ads will appear around the edges of the room and start to travel towards the boss kill these ads off as soon as possible. If any of them reach the boss, they will cause his AoE burst, which happens after the phase is over, to deal way more damage. These ads are CCable with stuns, grips, and slows, so make sure you use them. Side note, some people save cooldowns and just nuke the boss from 50% to 0% before the ads can even reach him. And some people have found that if you root one of the ads and it never reaches him, the boss will cast forever. This strat will probably be fixed though. On the spider trash directly after the first boss when you're going up the stairs, have your tank pull all of the little spiders up to the area with the larger spider. Once you're there, AoE them down all at once. This just makes it so all of the AoE patches that spawn from the spider's corpses just happen in one area making it way easier to avoid. When fighting the night health trash in the next room, try to stun the risen scouts during their knife dance ability as it does a large amount of AoE damage to the entire group and it cannot be interrupted by usual means. Once you've cleared the hall for the first time, hide behind one one of the pillars. This allows you to easily group up the next set of ads that are about to jump down. The right hand pillar is actually faster than the left. The next boss is Ilisana Ravencrest. As the tank, make sure you use active mitigation on the Vengeful Shear cast. As ranged, make sure you are spread out to avoid the Glaive debuff application from bouncing around between you. And when the Dark Rush debuff comes in, have players stand somewhat close together to avoid the boss charging all around the room and just leaving this horrible fell goo everywhere. When she transitions, kite the eye beams if they're fixated on you, or if you think your heal is up to the task, you can just stand in them and just deal damage to the boss. Make sure to interrupt or CC the Arcanist ad on the left hand side to avoid the ramping damage buff they gain from each cast. Also, the Vanguard has a cleave attack, so face it away from anyone else. After the second boss, don't get hit by the boulders on the first set of stairs, and then don't get hit by the boulders on the second set of stairs, or your group will probably laugh at you. You don't need to kill the two ads at the top of the boulder stairs if you don't want to. The bats in the trash before the next boss will randomly fixate on players. Being grouped up and using mass CC can help kill them off cleanly and quickly. The next boss is Smash Bite. Stand between the boss and the hateful charge target to intercept it, but only if they have the debuff from intercepting an earlier charge and you do not. Make sure that the line of goo from the Felbats is placed in a way that doesn't cover the entire room and just shit, and tanks and healers should be saving cooldowns for when the boss uses Brutal Haymaker at 100% energy, as the tank's going to be taking a ton of damage over the next 15 seconds. Healers should also be aware that the group will take AoE damage from the knockback. On the trash towards the last boss, be careful of the Raven Dive ability from the Risen Lancers. This will stun anyone in an area, and you can easily get chain stun from this if you pull too many. The last boss is Lord Ravencrest. During phase one, you want to avoid the blades that go in and out, as well as the large beam that goes across the room. Once phase two begins, you want to use any personal or group defensive cooldowns to reduce the damage you take from the first Shadow Bolt volley, as you won't have the 300% HP increase. Then, just avoid any green clouds that travel around the room, and if you have the Sting and Swarm mob on you, make Make sure you enter melee range so everyone can kill it off as soon as possible whilst also cleaving onto the boss. There will also be a phase where multiple purple beams go flying across the room. Just make sure you're not hit by any of them. And that's it. Enjoy your loot. Thank you so much for watching. If this video helped you out, support us by throwing a like on the video or support us further by heading over to our Patreon. Thanks for watching and see you next time.